She's a, a really interesting um, mix of highly, you know, refined literary sensibility, and then this kind of raw dog, you know, straight up, just get drunk and talk shit quality. In that literary world, at least my experience with it, people don't tend to have that range. And she's very connected to the earth. I mean, her writing really deals with very visceral subject matter and has a real intensity to it. And um, that comes out of her spirit. But then she has this uh, training and uh, understanding of language that's at a very high level. I think part of what if I would suggest was made Lions Club popular was that it's a Southern book. There hadn't been a Southern woman's voice, I don't believe, that had been quite like that, like hers. People tend to think of the Southern white experience as, you know, rednecks and uh, crackers and it's very, there's a negative connotation, especially in a place like New York or more, you know, LA. She was able to overcome that because her, the work was so detailed. She took these people and she made them into real literary characters um, without, I don't think caricaturing them, but I felt like they were very honest. Cherry hit me a lot harder in the sense because I feel like it's hard to, to write that. Adolescence, which is kind of what that book covers, is a super difficult period. And it's a difficult period to write about. Bob and Rum. Well, I really, I mean, I remember reading that like, wow. When she's able to take material and, and, and stuff that I didn't see as usual literary stuff and boom, uh, give it a vitality and a life. It didn't feel, feel precious. It didn't feel like some stuff from a writer's colony. It felt like someone had been lived and then had the ability to transfer their living experience in the, in the great language. We tell stories about our past. Our narrative of our life is a big part of how we communicate. And when you tell it to someone in passing, they just say, oh, yeah, okay. But when you have it on paper, there's a certain, it look, it's just a cold, stark reality to it. But also how imperfect memory is. Uh, there were so many things that I went and asked my sister about. No, you said blah, 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 blah. Oh, really? Oh, my mother. So I realized how faulty my memory literally was about details or how much uh, you have one point of view on what happened at this pivotal moment in your family's history and the other people who were involved had completely different memories of that. So I, I found that quite challenging. It was really revelatory. Um, memory and then also uh, how much stuff you were protecting. There are books that are, well I mean the ones that I grew up on, a lot, I was you know trying to find my way as a black writer so they throw, there's certain books you get thrown at. Black Boy by Richard Wright is one of those books. And I remember that very well. I actually remember Native Son, which is sort of his fictional corollary to that. And I, you know, Black Boy is actually a better book, I think, and more honest and more um, powerful. And what's funny about that book is that um, years later, apparently there was a second part to it that came out years later called American Hunger. So even though that book felt so powerful, there was a whole nother adult narrative that got cut out at the time for political reasons. A friend of mine's mother, uh, Lisa Jones's mother, Hetty Jones, did a really great memoir called How I Became Hetty Jones. Really, really, it is a small book, beautiful, really brought you back to the village in the 60s, 50s, 60s really, when she, she was married to Leroy Jones, then later Amiri Baraka and how she became that woman, how they met their life together. Um, and a really amazing depiction of, of that bohemian world. So that's another one that really, really stuck with me because it was, it was just like almost a perfect little snapshot of a moment. One of the things that's really challenging about doing a memoir is the honesty that you have to have because I think readers feel the evasions. If you're writing about uh, coming of age and you don't write about sex, or you don't write about sex in an honest way, it's pretty clear that you're holding back. You can't rely just on memory. You have to talk to other people, you have to read. Because in, in memoir, you're capturing the moment as you saw it, but there's also an obligation to capture the moment as it really was, which is not always the same thing.